Dr. Zudi Jasser is the founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's a former U.S. Navy lieutenant commander. He's the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. We're so pleased to welcome on our guest line, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Dr. Jasser, welcome to CPAC. How are you, my friend? Oh, it's great to be with you, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thank you so very much. I, uh, you know, one of the first things that Trump critics say is that he is all about implementing a Muslim ban, a religious test. He wants to ban Muslims. Can you put, can you dispel that once and for all for our listeners? Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, what's written on the paper didn't seem to matter to anybody. There is nothing about Muslim or ban. It was seven countries that the Obama administration had identified as seven almost anarchical, chaotic countries whose regimes were not reliable. Yemen, Syria, Libya, Iraq. These are countries that, uh, uh, and Iran that are sponsors of terrorism, and we need it. It's a good first step. But you'll notice the reason they're calling it a Muslim ban, forget the fact that there's 45 or so other Muslim-majority countries. If anything, I would say as a reformer, we should have included Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, but, you know, listen, this is the first step, and the left, through their agitation propaganda, is trying to agitate, uh, forget the facts, uh, propagandize it, make it into identity politics, and deceive America into thinking there's a religious test, when, in fact, there's nothing more American than stopping and, and preventing those who believe in theocracy, who are uh, uh, Muslim or non-Muslim, that don't share our values, and for too long, the vetting process has not included ideology, and we need to include an obstacle to those who don't share our values and not just say, well, we just have to make sure they don't belong to terror groups, they're not engaged in endorsing violence. But as President Trump has told us during the campaign and, and before, America is smarter than the Obama administration ever took credit for, and they realize that the lack of a vetting process for ideology has been very problematic, and this cause, not a ban, this pause will begin the process of engaging us and, and beginning to figure out how we vet more truly those who deserve to come here. Dr. Uh, Jasser, let's talk about what uh, the inability to wrap our brain around the problem of refugees, not only here in the United States, but in places like Sweden, in France. This seems to be the, 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 the down-the-rabbit-hole story that no one can get a straight answer on. Uh, is there an issue? Of, of people of Muslim faith who call themselves refugees, who are, who are making life difficult for people who live in a country like Sweden, or not. I mean, because we can't, no one can seem to answer this, uh, uh, you know, with any cl a kind of clarity. Can you provide some clarity on this, this difficult issue? Well, you know, Mike, listen, I have family in Aleppo that are dodging bombs that don't know if they're going to be with us in the next weeks uh, they are uh, fighting for their lives and starving and and it's just a horrific situation in syria and there are 10 million people displaced out of a country of 23 million and what happened is and i i tell you that because i think there is nothing more pro-refugee pro-muslim pro-reform than us vetting refugees better because what happens when you accept the sonic boom of huge rushes as europe did it ends up making the europeans and the West despise refugees because they see those who come in that are criminal elements, that are corrupt, that people that just hijack the refugee situation, that uh, are escaping in order to cause chaos in Europe. And we already know, statistics have shown, studies have shown that 10 to 20 percent of refugees have sympathies for ISIS and radical Islam. So why not bet against those and let the 80 percent come through? in a slower, more methodical, reasoned basis, rather than with the sonic boom. You have Germany now already talking about deporting mass numbers because they're either criminals and, and aren't passing a final, more thorough vetting process. So, yes, we're seeing uh, a, a increase in crime in Sweden. We're seeing the, the refugee community that uh, is, is not ready for Western civilization. They are are often uh, an element that uh, were not wanted, uh, and many of them are not Syrian, by the way. They're Afghani, Iranian, Pakistani, others that have just sort of come to, to join the flow of refugees into Europe, and there's no right to go into those countries, and I think we need to be a little less concerned about political correctness and more concerned about avoiding 
national fratricide by allowing those in who really just want to destroy our country rather than actually enjoy the freedom and liberties like my family did when they escaped Syria in the mid-50s. Have you been shocked at the pushback from the media and from the politically correct crowd over even the mere suggestion that there there is a refugee problem involving those who are engaged in Islamic uh, in their Islamic faith. I mean, is that shocked you to see that? You know, you know the reason it does is they seem to have this anesthesia about the numbers that the Obama administration let in. They barely let in ten thousand in fifteen. They had raised it to 20 to 40, and now in 17 was the year they were talking about letting in 100,000. So it's not as if the Obama administration was this uh, open-arm acceptance. Their vetting process took a long time. Now, they didn't accept ideological vetting, which is what they should have done, as we did in the Cold War, but they didn't. So the media is exaggerating, making it into this major whiplash that the Trump administration is doing, when in fact all the Trump administration did was decrease it from 100 to 50 for 2017 and to say, you know, hold on a second, let's bring those in that want political asylum, that's what America is about, but let's also talk about minority persecution, uh, others that have, have sort of, the, the Obama approach was this Darwin approach of survival of the fittest or first come, first serve, rather than actually vetting for those who deserve to come here, and the media is ignoring all that as if there's been some major change, right. when in fact the facts belie that uh, reality of the fact there isn't has been that much change. Dr. Zudi Jasser, will we win this argument long term? Do you think Donald Trump has the has the clarity to to continue to deliver this message the with with truth and with accuracy and with clarity or do you think this is an uphill climb? Is this too heavy a lift to try to get through to the average American? Well, it's not too heavy a lift. I will tell you that I hope that we from the conservative side, as we talk in CPAC, we talk about not only what we're against, but I think the messaging needs to be what we're for. Right. That we are not uh, against Muslims or Islam or anything. We are for those who seek freedom and liberty. And if that right. messaging becomes more from the rooftop, I think we will win this uh, public battle. Dr. Zudi Jasser, keep fighting the good fight. I'm so very glad you could join us here at CPAC. All the best. Uh, one of the best and the brightest here on the Mike Gallagher Show.